I'm Shauna, and this is Brian. Welcome to our channel, Life Uninterrupted. In 2018, we sold our home, auctioned off most of our belongings, and bought a motorhome, which we affectionately refer to as Frida. We travel full-time with our two French Bulldogs, Lucy and Ricky. Join us on our adventures by subscribing and hitting the bell icon so that you're notified when our videos release each week. We're back! Show of hands at how many people thought that we had disappeared for good. We did in a way. Um, we've just been kind of taking a break. Things have been really crazy for us the last month or so. Shauna's business is really taking off and we just wanted to take a break so we haven't been putting out near as many videos as most of you can probably tell. Um, so if you don't know what we do, or what Shauna does rather, you want to oh. share with them what we do? <clears throat> what you do? Yeah, so I have a, an HR consulting business that I do pretty much Monday through Friday and I have several clients spread across the U.S. and business has just been picking up so I'm working what seems like more and more but I try to keep it at a 20-hour maximum every week. Yeah, so that's the challenging part and uh, you know we also made a change in our equipment setup and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we just needed a break. For those of you that have stuck by us and sent us messages wondering uh, if we're still doing YouTube, we are. Uh, we're just scaling it back because uh, Shauna's business is picking up. It's funny that that uh, we, we talk about uh, her business now. Uh, you know, a few years ago, before we decided to get on the road, uh, I had posed a question to her: What if we just, uh, you know, start a business? I'll be your logistics manager, business manager, all of that stuff. Uh, you just show up to places, give your, uh, you know, your lectures and your uh, your. Um, teaching sessions, whatever that might be, and then um, we go from place to place and do that. And uh, she was not in favor of that, but here we are a few years later doing exactly that uh, in a little bit different way, but still doing that. By the way, Ricky and Lucy down here, doing what they do best. Yeah, they're real busy. Yeah, they Got sleep. A lot to do today. So we are in a Boondockers Welcome location in Maine. Uh, it's actually just a big parking lot of a church, but I think last night there were four four rigs in here, uh, three motorhomes. There's actually still two motorhomes, um, and then a little van with a trailer. All right, so I mentioned a minute ago about some of our changes in equipment. That's been a major change and a major undertaking to get all of that in place. So we'll go outside and take a look at what we've done and I kind of explain to you what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to capture all of this on film. I haven't captured any actually of, of the, the changeover, switchover and equipment on film. Uh, frankly, just haven't had on film, on video. <laughs> tells you how old, old I am, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we haven't uh, captured any of that on video and shared any of that. Uh, just ha really haven't had the time to compile all that and put it all together. So just kind of go over that today, do a brief overview of what I've done already and what I still have left to do so that uh, there's one less thing on our plates to have to do during, especially during travel days. So let's go outside and take a look at what we've got. But right, I mentioned inside that we are staying at a Boondockers Welcome location, and we are here in Biddeford, Maine, and this is Grace Point Church, a great place to stay, huge parking lot, there's a coach across the way from us there, there were a couple other RVs in here this morning and a trailer, uh, big huge parking lot, you can really pretty much park anywhere, but if you want power, you have to park up front here by the road, so it's a little noisier up here but there's 50 amp service and also a 20 amp uh, service, uh, smaller outlet. This is the first place we've stayed. Well, I guess the second place we've stayed, it has a 50 amp hookup. And uh, so that makes it pretty nice. The next place we're staying actually also has 50 amp water and dump station. So that's pretty cool. So as I mentioned that uh, we are parked pretty close to the roads so during the day. Yeah, there is quite a bit of traffic, but if you wanted something a little quieter, you could uh, you know, park back here. I would imagine you can even park 
up in that upper parking lot, except on Sundays because obviously they have church and they don't want you uh, using, you know, the main parking area if you're going to be here on a Sunday. We have been in here on a Sunday and it was uh, maybe a third full, so not crazy. All right. So let's get to the big change in our equipment setup. You know, if you've been following us for any time, uh, we started out with a Jeep Grand Cherokee, an 05 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I got a great deal on it. It was an Arizona car. Really, really good condition. Bought it from the original owner and kept it dealer maintained. Oh, well, we sold that. There's a little glimpse of what we have now. It's the little tease. Uh, you know, that Jeep Grand Cherokee was a nice vehicle. Had a couple of mechanical issues, not huge. Um, it was just so darn heavy. You know, it was a little over 5,000, 5,030 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I weighed it. Our coach has a 5,000 pound hitch. So I was always a little concerned about that. I know there's a safety factor on these hitches. So I wasn't too concerned about going 30 or even 100 pounds over. So because we, could, we did keep the bikes in there as well. So I was a little overweight on the hitch. And, uh, you know, I just got tired of lugging that 5,000 pounds around. So we went with something a lot lighter and, uh, you know, got rid of the Jeep. We had uh, some mixed emotions about that because the Jeep has been pretty good to us. It's taken us some pretty cool places. We do like to go off-roading. And uh, obviously that was a great vehicle to do that in. Here comes another big truck, so hopefully it doesn't blow us out. Uh, so... Let that truck pass. <laughs> so, what we decided to do is go with a much lighter vehicle, and we've been kind of looking around. We really wanted to get a Jeep Wrangler Sport two-door, uh, you know, four-wheel drive, four-cylinder, six-cylinder. Again, a much lighter vehicle. But boy, those are hard to come by, and when you do find them, people just want an arm and a leg for them. We had a hard time finding one for less than $40,000. And that just wasn't in our budget because we knew that whatever vehicle we were going to buy, we were going to buy it outright. We didn't want payments. Uh, so we were successful in that. All right, so enough of a tease here. Here's what we have now. We bought a 2020 Chevrolet Equinox, a very popular car and a very good car, very uh, highly rated in terms of safety. 3,400 pounds and change. So a huge difference in weight. Uh, it's got a little 1.5 liter turbo engine in it, which does pretty darn good. I was surprised by that small of an engine doing that well. It's kind of dirty right now. We haven't had a chance to wash it. It's been raining a lot here in Maine. So it is an all-wheel drive vehicle, and uh, which makes it uh, flat towable. And it was the, the procedure to put it into flat tow mode is very similar to the Jeep. Basically, it's a, a couple of buttons and you know the transaxle shifts into neutral more or less uh, the only major difference on this vehicle is that uh, unlike the jeep where i could just turn the ignition off and just be done with it i didn't have to worry about anything draining the battery down during uh, travel days uh, this vehicle does have to have the accessory mode on and basically uh, the electronics running in the vehicle which does pose an issue with battery uh, discharge so I did have to install a charge line in the vehicle. Now the coach already had that because the previous owner had a vehicle that had to have a charge line installed on it to, to keep its battery charged. Um, I, I, I debated whether or not I really needed to install that because we usually only travel three or four hours, sometimes five hours tops. Um, could you know the system drain the battery in that amount of time? Possibly. So I just said, heck with it. Uh, I bought a charge line kit uh, it was like $50 from eTrailer.com. Uh, I installed it in a matter of minutes. So now I have a charge line in that, and I'll show you how I routed that and everything else. So on this, I also had to install the base plate. That was a major undertaking. And I'll, I'll show you why. I'll raise the hood here on the Equinox and give you an idea of you know, how I installed the... That charge line it's pretty simple it's basically just a positive cable coming off of the battery hang on hang on it's weird uh, this vehicle doesn't have 
shocks on the hood, which would have preferred that, but oh well. So let's take a look at this charge line. Pretty simple. So this is a circuit breaker here, the positive line running to the battery, and then the uh, other side of the breaker running around the front of the vehicle. I got it all tucked in and wire tied. And then it's connected here to the center pole of that uh, plug, which is where the six-way plug goes in and connects to the seven-way plug on the back of the coach. So pretty simple. You know, in the scheme of things. Uh, so what that does is provides a 15 amp charging uh, circuit to the car battery and just, you know, prevents the battery from going dead. All right, so I showed you that socket a second ago. Uh, that's connected to the um, base plate that I had to install. Now, you can imagine the entire front of this uh, car had to come off, the whole fascia. Headlights had to come out. Even had to take out this washer bottle. This is the weirdest washer bottle I've ever seen. It's super long and goes way down and connects to the bottom of the frame. Crazy big, a few connectors on it. So that all came off. And then I installed a Roadmaster um, base plate system. You can see here, this is where the, um, the connectors go to connect to the back of the coach. They twist in and lock, which is nice. A little different than the last one we had. And then all the safety cables connect here. So I do have a ready brake system and I just uh, had this, uh, actually I installed this the other day myself. The hardest part was just getting under the vehicle because it does sit quite a bit lower than the Jeep. So I had to improvise a little bit there, but um, this is the breakaway cable here. So in case of a vehicle breakaway, this will pull. There's a mechanism inside that will uh, lock this cable into place as it pulls and, and locks the brake lever or uh, the brake pedal, you know, to the floor. And then this cable is used for just typical braking. So this also gets connected to the ready brake. And as the ready brake actuates, this will pull in and out and apply the brake pressure and provide braking for the vehicle. Works pretty well. We used it on the Jeep and uh, only had one issue with that and that was my mistake. You might remember way, way back when we were coming out of South Dakota. And if you haven't seen the video, I'll put it up here. Uh, yeah, the front brakes, actually all the brakes were, were semi-locked and the front of the Jeep caught on fire. Well, the brakes did. Smoked and started a little bit of fire in there. Uh, but had all that replaced and it worked fine after that. All right, so the only thing I have to do today, and this is gonna be not as challenging as having installed the brake system, but I still have to have the vehicle raised up a little bit. So I have some blocks that I'll, I'll put this side of the vehicle up on. So the only thing I have to do is install the wiring bundle, or the wiring harness. Uh, I did the same thing on the Jeep. And, you know, I'm not in favor of the kinds of wiring harnesses that you have to, uh, you know, cut into the factory harness. Uh, I just don't want those kinds of headaches. So I did buy a harness from Kurt. It's basically a plug and play. Uh, all I have to do really is just pull out these tail lights on each side, run the harness to either side, disconnect connectors on the lights, plug you know, this uh, harness in between the two connectors, put the lights back in, run the wiring harness to the front, and hook that up to the six-way connector. Just that easy, except it's going to take about two hours to do that. <laughs> uh, so that's what's on my plate for today. And then, of course, I'll uh, connect that to the coach and you know, make sure all that works well. Uh, obviously before heading out on our next travel day because this has been a bit of a headache. Um, sorry, a lot of vehicle traffic in this area, as I said before. So, you know, it's really been a headache. You know, a lot of times while we're traveling, uh, Shauna has meetings with clients that she'll take, you know, while I'm driving the coach and she's sitting in the passenger seat, she's able to do that pretty, pretty well, works out well. Uh, but the last, 
uh, was it been two or three weeks since we purchased the vehicle in New Hampshire she hasn't been able to do that so it's been a little challenging we've had to modify our travel days so that she can do her work uh, either before or after we leave or arrive somewhere all right well uh, that's really all I wanted to do today just a quick update on you know where we are where we've been and uh, to let you know we haven't disappeared entirely and uh, you know, I'm not going to capture the installation of the harness so I'll give you a kind of a brief overview of you know that uh, system as I hook it up once I get everything hooked up here I'll just show you how everything works freaking hot today it's gonna be like 100 degrees with uh, humidity factor heat index. heat index anyway there's a method to my madness so this parking lot it has a, a, a slope this way towards the road so I'm gonna hook up the car and then put it in neutral for towing and let the car roll back and lock in the arms on the tow bar so with this car, this is a 2020 Chevy Equinox. You have to uh, let it run for five minutes prior to towing to lubricate the transmission. So we'll have, uh, it'll be doing that no problem here in the next couple of minutes. And then uh, it says that every fuel stop and then at the end of the day, uh, let it run for five minutes to lubricate the transmission. So I'll get it hooked up. previous video you saw me hooking up the Jeep to this system. This is a surge brake system that connects to this cable right here. And then uh, this cable connects to the brake pedal. And as the uh, car surges forward and brakes, this lever will come up like that. And it'll pull the brake pedal and apply brakes to the car. I like these, this uh, base plate system much better. The old system had pins I had to push through there and this just twist and lock in, which is nice. All right, so now these are gonna be free floating until I uh, move the car back. I'll put it in the, man, uh, the tow mode and then the car should just slide back and then lock these levers in. So we'll give that a go. Has it been running for five minutes? Come over here. Kind of explain it. Turning the AC off, so I'm sacrificing my coolness. So this is pretty simple. You just uh, connect to the vehicle or connect to the tow vehicle, start the vehicle. If equipped with all-wheel drive, which ours is, the all-wheel drive button down here, engage that. It's got the light on. So shift the transmission to neutral. Uh, let's see. So you can't do that without being in the, on the brake. So neutral. Um, and then take the foot off the brake. You're rolling. Yeah, we'll roll a little bit and then press the accessory engine start stop. 
should turn amber, which it is. Um, so it says the chime that you hear will ring for 30 minutes. Leave the transmission in neutral, which it is. The accessory mode is on. Turn off all accessories. So you don't want anything coming on like the radio. You want that turned off, AC turned off, automatic lights, um, turn those off. I think it uh, works like that. So everything's off. So that's it. So we should be able to push the vehicle back. I thought it would roll back on its own, but obviously not. So let's get a shot of this locking in as I kind of push the vehicle back. Once those arms lock in, it should lock. Right there, they're locked in. So not too much movement. The uh, the reds were already the reds were already locked. Okay, yeah. So. They, must, they must have it came back a little bit. So oh, yeah. they're locked in. Sure did. So this is the way these travel, these uh, red uh, levers have to be pointed towards the coach right. and then that locks these arms in there's a stop in there that locks them in so that this is not floating around and in and out like this so that's it so this is uh good you want a couple of inches of slack there which it is uh that's probably a little tight i might want to loosen that up at some point uh to provide a little more slack when turning yes we're gonna take the coach and the car around the parking lot here since this is the first tow on this I just want to make sure that everything's functioning properly and uh, before I do that uh, get a shot of this cable right there as I press on the brake pedal and make sure that goes in and out for me. Which one the black or the red? The black one. Black one. I press on the brake pedal that cable black cable should move out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wagging its tongue at you. Yep. Okay. remember this whole thing is like moving around is it supposed What's to that? do that yeah the whole yeah it's got yeah it was like really uh um, pivot and flex yeah. points yeah. okay designed for that but you didn't hear any uh squealing of tires no. or dragging of anything yeah no you want to take it around one more time just to be sure before we get on we're the okay road? i need to hook up my uh, breakaway cables but i'm okay i hope there's enough room because that thing really moves Feel towing it. Uh, I couldn't even tell it was behind me. You forgot to put the um, shade up in there. I'll do that. All right, so that's okay. gonna wrap it up for this one. Hey, you guys think Brian might be a little warm? It is hot. <laughs> Looks like somebody dumped water over the top of you. Aww. It is hot and uh, it is terrible right now. Nasty. So we're gonna get on the road. Yeah.